Need a quick gift that'll be meaningful to someone special? Hi, I'm Ken from KHK Woodworks, and today we'll use scraps to make the best bookmark that your favorite reader will love. My scrap bin is full of thin strips left over from resawing shaker box bands. Each species of wood has its own unique color. Maple, accented with butternut and walnut, will make an attractive combination since they're all in the brown family. The bookmark's main field is a three quarter inch thick piece of maple that's about two inches wide. I'll need to rip two strips of butternut and two strips of walnut to rough out all the material needed for the glue up. The center maple section will come from a leftover piece of eight quarter plank. That's also from the scrap bin. Joining one side flat and true will ensure a consistent thickness. Each of the accent strips also needs to be flat and true. Push blocks help safely move the thin strips over the cutter head and ensure a consistent pressure on the infeed and outfeed sides of the bed. With a carbide tipped blade, resawing all the pieces to rough thickness is quick and easy. You can also use your table saw for this, but you'll lose more material in the thickness of the cut. A drum sander does a nice job of dialing in the final thickness on all of the pieces and making sure the sides are parallel. If you don't have a drum sander, you can always use a hand sander or, depending upon the roughness of the surface, just leave it as they will be inside of the glue up. Modern glues today are really strong. Sufficient wetting is the critical factor to ensure a solid glue joint. Spread the glue evenly on both surfaces so there's complete contact between the surfaces. I cut plastic spreaders from old milk jugs, but inevitably resort to the permanently attached tool of my finger. With all the glue faces covered, you can use whatever clamps that you have handy to apply consistent pressure along the joint. Don't over tighten the clamps, you just want to draw the faces together. Tightening too much, you'll force all the glue out of the joint and it will ultimately fail. With the glue fully cured, flatten and true one face using the joiner or a hand plane. You can then cut individual slices off the blank, making up the bookmarks. I alternate between the joiner and the bandsaw between each slice so I always have one flat, smooth face. Here you can see how the dark woods really stand out nicely alongside the maple. A final pass through the drum sander brings all the slices to a consistent thickness. I use a lot of blue painter's tape in my shop. In this case, taping the pieces together at the cut line enables me to save time by cutting all of the strips together. More importantly, the tape also eliminates chip out on the thin strips when cutting them to length. With the pieces still ganged together, Rounding over the corners is quick and easy using a disc sander. Just keep the pieces rotating for smooth results. With the nicely contrasting wood, you could just add a finish at this point and be done with the bookmarks, but that would waste a perfectly good laser. Using a simple fixture that I cut using the laser, I can gang together three bookmark blanks, increasing my throughput. Engraving on the laser is done in two steps. First, a raster operation burns the graphics at 500 dpi. It uh, works similar to the way that an inkjet printer prints, except with a really powerful light. While the laser is finishing its operation, how about taking your mouse over to visit the like or the subscribe button? Thanks, it really helps to promote the channel, and I appreciate it. Next, a vector operation can have the laser follow any continuous curves to perform cutting operations. The laser control software can apply different power settings to varying colored curves. In this case, the blue curves are used to cleanly and quickly cut the tassel holes. 
The best way that I've found to finish large volumes of small wooden pieces is to use a penetrating oil such as linseed oil. Place all the pieces into a pla plastic Ziploc bag. Then add a generous amount of oil. Make sure there's enough to fully cover all of the pieces and then massage the oil so it covers all the surfaces. Squeeze out most of the air that's in the bag, seal the bag, and then let the pieces soak for about 30 minutes or so. After that amount of time, you can remove the pieces. When I'm removing the pieces, I generally pinch the pieces from the outside of the bag to effectively squeegee off the excess oil, leaving it in the bag. Any remaining oil on the pieces will drip into this pl plastic container as I stand them upright. Finally, wipe off all the remaining excess oil and hang the pieces overnight to dry. You can speed up the drying process by blowing air over them with a fan or by hanging them in front of a forced air heating duct. As you can see, the oil really brings out the natural colors of the contrasting woods and makes the laser engraving really stand out. And finally, you can find small tassels online to give your bookmark a professional finish. Now it's your turn to go make something great. Use the comment section below if you have any questions, and I'd really love to hear what you've created. You know you can do it. As always, thanks for watching.